At the crime scene, a dog comes up to a police officer. The dog has a gym bag in its mouth. The officer convinces the dog to give him the bag. When he opens it and understands what it means, he starts crying. For Officer Ben Walker, it was another night dealing with yet another crime scene, one saturated with desperation and the lingering smell of old alcohol, a familiar mix. He swatted at a mosquito, his weariness weighing heavily on his shoulders. A skinny dog with ribs visible under its dusty coat appeared at the edge of the area marked off with tape. It held a worn-out gym bag in its mouth. Go away! Go! Walter muttered, waving a hand. Normally, stray dogs scattered when shooed, but this one didn't move. It stood firm, almost challenging him on all fours. Swearing under his breath, Walter lunged towards the dog. The animal darted back, the bag swinging wildly. In a swift motion, Walter grabbed the bag's strap. The dog tensed, its muscles tense, its eyes locked intensely on the man. It wasn't just a stray protecting its fine. There was something hopeful in those eyes. Back at the station, the bright, flickering fluorescent lights and the lingering smell of old coffee did nothing to ease Walter's tiredness. He slammed the gym bag down onto his desk, feeling desperate for a break. Not another case that seemed like a dead end. The bag zipper was rusty. He opened it and emptied out the contents, creating a cloud of dust. Inside were faded t-shirts, a pair of worn-out sneakers, and a dog collar. There was nothing to suggest a robbery gone wrong. He cursed under his breath, thinking the night couldn't possibly get worse. Then his fingers brushed up against something solid. A notebook slipped out. He flipped it open, finding faded ink filling the pages. It wasn't just scribbles or grocery lists. Instead, it contained dense handwriting, carefully drawn diagrams, and lists neatly organized into columns. This wasn't the stash of some small-time thief. A shiver of unease ran down his spine. One list caught his eye. Names and dates, some crossed out with heavy black lines. Each name had a note next to it. Park, 2 p.m., grocery store, evening. Was this some form of observation or surveillance? His heart raced as he compared the dates to the reports of missing persons. Too many matched, and the matches were too perfect. The weight of those crossed out names slammed into him. This was more than a stray dog in a gym bag. This notebook hinted at a darkness slithering just beneath the surface of a small town. His gut told him so. The thought that he might just might have stumbled across a pattern and a chance to solve those cases ignited a spark of defiance in him. Walker couldn't hold back his tears any longer. He cried silently and glanced around to ensure no one saw him. He was alone. The toll of the job was wearing on him. The horrors, tragedies, and losses that accompanied every homicide case he handled. Collecting himself, he wiped his eyes and got back to work. Every cop had a network, and Walker wasn't hesitant to utilize his. Nick Nosey Parker had retired two years ago. He now sported a substantial beer gut and was known for his gossip and surprisingly sharp memory. Mella, now there's a blast from the past. Nutcase that guy. PTSD messed him up bad. He always thought he was on to something big, and he got himself kicked out for ranting about conspiracies. Walker leaned in closer. He never cared much for Miller, but the man had been a good cop before he lost his grip on reality. Yeah, Parker continued, invisible killers, he said. Miller believed his own colleagues were involved in the disappearances. He kept notebooks filled with all sorts of information. The mention of these notebooks caught Walker's attention. His thoughts raised. This could be it, the kind of twisted detail their killer might possess. It took a day of bureaucratic wrangling with the records department to track down Miller. The former cop had vanished completely, and someone seemed intent on keeping him hidden. His last known address was a rundown cabin on the outskirts of the city's jurisdiction. Dusk cast ominous shadows cover the trees as Walker's headlights illuminate a lonely path through the overgrown lane leading to the isolated dwelling. The cabin stood as a relic, a proof to a life derailed under the fading dusk. Walker thought he spotted a dog resembling the one from the crime scene, but he dismissed it and focused on the cabin itself. Grime covered the windows, and an overflow of mail spilled from a rusted box. A loud knock on the peeling door reverberated in the heavy silence. Footsteps shuffled inside, followed by the rattle of a chain. Only one eye appeared through the narrow crack, bloodshot and filled with fear. A grunt sounded. The chain unhooked, and the door creaked open slowly. Miller stood hunched over, his gaunt features swallowed by a wild beard. The 
The air reeked of stale sweat and something foul. I've got nothing to say to cops, Miller snarled, his eyes nervously scanning the dense woods. That damn dog keeps coming around here. Even stole a gym bag from the porch not long ago. Walker pushed his way into the cabin, explaining to Miller that he needed his assistance. Once seated, Walker opened his case file and produced photos of the victims. Miller recoiled, his eyes widening before hardening with resolve. Get out, he croaked, his voice strained. Walker persisted, urging Miller that he knew the former cop possessed crucial information he desperately needed. He hinted that Miller might have witnessed something significant in the past, something about empty streets. Miller's voice escalated into a frenzied pitch. Walker noticed it then, sitting on a dusty shelf among worn paperbacks and faded trophies, a notebook. It resembled a duplicate of the one found in the gym bag. Lunging for it, Walker felt a wave of nausea as he opened its pages. Inside were meticulous surveillance photographs of familiar streets and ordinary moments, but what shocked him were the timestamps. They were incredibly recent. One photo startled him like an electric shock. He depicted his own back turned as he walked down a street just a week earlier. Another showed his car parked outside his apartment complex. Panic gripped his heart like a vice. A strained cry from behind caused him to whirl around. Miller stood before him, eyes blazing with fury. You think you understand? You're blind, all of you. No one believed me back then. And maybe now you will. He charged, swinging a rusty pipe. The sound of sirens pierced the tense scene. Relief swept over Walker, only to dissipate as he recognized the markings on the approaching patrol car. It wasn't from his precinct, not his colleagues. This wasn't backup. Miller fell eerily silent. His tirade abruptly ended. A glimmer of smug satisfaction replaced the madness in his eyes. Suddenly, the cabin door burst open. Officer Brooks, young and neatly dressed, stormed in. His gaze swept over Walker before fixing on Miller. Tom, what's going on? Brooks asked urgently, concern evident in his voice, not suspicion. Miller let out a dramatic wheeze and pointed accusingly at Walker, claiming he was an intruder. Brooks turned back to Walker with a stern look. Step away, sir, he commanded. Walker felt his world tilt as he tried to explain who he was and what he suspected. Searching through the shelves, Walker spotted a bulky camera bag tucked behind an old cardboard box. Unzipping it, he revealed lenses, batteries, and a memory card, proof of Miller's voyeuristic obsession. A noise echoed down the corridor, signaling that time was running out. Walker swiftly grabbed the bag and dashed toward the rear exit. He descended a rusty fire escape and disappeared into a shadowy alley. The weight of the evidence bag pressed against his side as he retrieved his phone. Scrolling through his contacts, he hesitated briefly before selecting a familiar name, Agent Selena Carter of the FBI. They had collaborated in the past, and her straightforward approach contrasted sharply with the corrupt officers he had just encountered. Walker took a deep breath before dialing Carter. It's Walker. I need your help, he said urgently. He proceeded to unravel the convoluted tale, the mysterious disappearances, the ominous notebook, Miller's cryptic admission, and Officer Brooks' suspicious role in isolating Miller in the remote cabin. Carter listened in stunned silence, her only response a succinct, Stay put. We're on our way. With the break of dawn, a convoy of unmarked SUVs swarmed the precinct, agents flooding the building while Walker observed from a nearby rooftop. News outlets were already buzzing with the story. A leaked tip hinted at a widespread police corruption scandal, sending shockwaves through the city. Inside the station, chaos ensued as Brooks was apprehended. It appeared he had exploited Miller's fixation on people, using it to orchestrate the kidnappings. As a former cop, he knew precisely how to cover his tracks and shift blame onto a colleague branded as unstable. Miller vehemently protested as agents forcibly removed him from his cabin. A whirlwind of investigations ensued, gathering witnesses' testimonies and scrutinizing leaked documents. The unraveling conspiracy exposed a network of complicit officers who had turned a blind eye and even profited from the victims' disappearances. Weeks later, Walker found himself back at the park where it all started. The air was cool and autumn leaves danced in the breeze. He sat quietly on a familiar bench, deep in thought. Beside him sat the dog. He gently scratched behind its ears. This dog had silently witnessed so much pain, yet it had also been instrumental in bringing about change. It had guided him towards the truth, a truth that had almost cost him everything, including his own life. Both of them bore scars, but neither was shattered. Together, 
they would rebuild their lives. The stubborn cop and the loyal mutt that had refused to give up on a deceased woman. They had both acted with unwavering loyalty and a relentless pursuit of justice. What an unexpected turn. Do you have a story about a loyal dog saving the day? Share it with us in the comments. We would love to hear it. But for now, we're signing off, and we'll see you in the next video.